Mid Journey version 6 is out and there are some major changes that all Mid Journey users should know. The first and most important change is just prompting style. How you are able to prompt in version 5 is not how you're going to prompt in version 6. So there are a lot of changes and that's what we're going to mainly focus in today's episode. By the end of the video, you should be a Mid Journey version 6 Pro prompter. Also, the other big change here is the ability to add text. This is an image that I just made here in Mid Journey and you can see it is amazing. So let's take a closer look in today's episode. All right, so let's take a closer look at what's happening here with Mid Journey. The alpha version of version six is out now. What they do mention with the new V6 based model, they have much more accurate prompt following as well as longer prompts. And this is something that's very important. They do mention that before, I wanna say after 15 words, prompts started to die down. Now it has changed. You can even have 250, 300 words. Word length is not that important in Mid Journey right now. It's more the amount of rendering. We're going to see a little bit about that in the future. They do mention that, hey, look, there are the ability for minor text drawing ability. You must write your text in quotations. And to kind of get the best solution here, it's better to either use style raw or very low values in the stylized attribute. Uh, they also do mention that there are certain things that you can't do in Mid Journey v6 like pan zoom vary um, describe right now in the new version 6 version um, but there are some other features and arguments that are already supported like aspect ratio like tile stylized vary and so much more the other things that they do mention is they have both improved the upscaler with both subtle and creative and we're going to take a closer look at that all right so the first thing i want to do is test out this text and like i mentioned later on we're going to see how to properly prompt but here we can see a photo of the text, Merry Christmas, written with festival color marker on a sticky note. So the first thing that you notice is my stylized is going to be at the default 100, which is low, right? That's what they expect. And overall, we got some amazing, amazing results. Three out of the four were correct spelling. And that's pretty good, right? Opposed to back then when you wouldn't get any anything close. So after that, what I wanted to do is kind of test out different styles as well. Now I started to add stylized. They do mention the higher your stylized value goes, the less likely you're going to get the correct prompt. Here I use value 500 and we can see none of these are actually correct. Um, this one's actually really nice, but it's not in a sticky note like I asked before. Then I ended up using stylized value 1000 and very similar, right? Everything here was pretty much a mistake. The text was spelled correctly here on this marker, but it was on the marker and not on a note. And now if we go to my original prompt, I did choose image one to upscale and within a the image one i did try upscale subtle and upscale creative i do want to say i enjoy the creative one it did kind of give me some color changes here this one's the subtle not too many changes but we do see the upscale increase uh the overall resolution of the image here we can see the creative and what i really do enjoy about the creative i feel like the colors pop up a little bit more on the main text here now let's continue about becoming prompting masters here in mid journey we can see that prompting with v6 is significantly significantly different than v5 you will need to relearn how to prompt they also mentioned to avoid junk like award-winning photorealistic 4k 8k and this is pretty interesting because i do believe most prompts back then would use something like 4k 8k rtx be explicit about what you want um version 6 is able to really understand and read out the prompt if you want something more photograph uh, photographic less opinionated and more literal it's very important to use the style wrong uh, for lower values of stylized default 100 may have better prompt understanding while higher values up to a thousand may have better aesthetics and this is something that in my opinion has always been the case they do mention that v6 is slower and more expensive versus v5 but obviously things are going to optimize as they continue to improve this model they do also mention that relo relax mode is supported it just takes a lot longer they do also mention that the community standard this model can generate much more realistic imagery than anything they have released before and they've also turned up their moderation system so definitely be careful now they have created an amazing mid journey prompting style course and i'm going to take a closer look at the things that i find the most important uh, first they do mention that the most important change might might be to strive to write in simple sentences 
of English that have good spelling and punctuations. Try not to rely too much on pronouns. It helps to just repeat the subjects. And we'll talk a little bit about that in a bit. And they mentioned don't worry about the number of words so much as the prompt length in version 6 is completely, completely different. In version 5, only the first 15 to 20 words had strong influence on the picture uh, before they ran out of memory. In version 6, it has completely changed. You can safe, they mean they're safely to say that they can have over 350 to even 500 words. It's not too much about the word cap, but what's more important is how much rendering work you're asking Midjourney to do. Uh, and that's something we're going to learn. So if you're just creating, for example, one subject, that one subject, you can have over 300 to 500 words. Now, if you're creating one subject and start creating subject two and subject three and subject four, the more subjects that you start to add, the more rendering version uh, v6 has to add and that's when they start to lose out on memory so usually if you have low amount of subjects you're going to be able to have more kind of creative and descriptive solutions on that one subject if you want more multiple subjects those multiple subjects you're going to end up losing is on the amount of detail each subject can have uh, because you start to lose out on memory they also give us some example of words that will paint something on on the canvas for example in directions above below beside against they also tell us words not to use extra ultra super hyper insanely 4k 6k 8k renderman v-ray unreal those are junk so get them out of your vision version 6 prompting right away another thing that mid journey wants to show us is that before the earlier the the text was the more influence it had in the Canva, but now Mid Journey version six is really looking at kind of what's important text. Uh, so, for example, here they have this super long prompt where the subject is a, ger a young, good looking German man. So you can see that, and then there's kind of a lot of filler and garbage. And at the end, they put he is wearing red glasses. And no matter after the, how long that prompt was, these images all provided this young German man wearing red glasses so it understands what are important words and it doesn't matter necessarily where it's at in the text there's going to be some conflicting uh, thoughts later on or, or reports later on that sometimes if you might not be getting the best results it does somewhat help if you bring it up closer to the beginning of the text uh, but here's a perfect example that that's not always the case here is a different example of how prompt is completely different in version 6 this is definitely not your typical prompt style that you would do in version 5 um, but pretty much it's a sparring program very similar to the reality of the matrix um, with the same rules and gravities and they do mention at the end that one thing is a delicious intact large pepperoni pizza is on the floor and we can see on all the images pretty much all the images we can see the pepperoni pizza here pepperoni pizza here pepperoni pizza here and the pepperoni pizza here and very much similarly following that matrix style uh, so prompting is completely different uh, so something we're gonna have to get used to all right, so next we're going to see that Midjourney does understand language or grammar much better than version 5. And here are some interesting examples of prompting and look how completely different they are than version 5. For example, look at this last one and I'll put the image right now. Once again, Herman couldn't find his keys and just like last night, he stood in the middle of the room and cried about it. So I do want to say three out of the four images really kind of give us Herman just sitting in the, standing in the room and and looking pretty sad. They do mention that you cannot describe a sequence or series of actions. They mentioned that the details will be flattened out into a single scene or snapshot. The best results will be if you kind of create more of a, a comic uh, of a comic style. So the first example that wouldn't work was a man went to purchase a hat. He got in his car, drove home and gave the hat as a gift to his wife. We can see they don't, and all the images are a bit different. One of them, we got a hat. We can see the other one driving with the man in the hat. And then we can another see another one with the man driving with his wife and they all have hats. So we don't know exactly what's happening here and we don't get what we wanted from the prompt. But what works really well is kind of making a comic book page has three panes. The first pane depicts the moon, the second pane depicts a tree, and the third pane depicts a bedroom. And here is another one. And those did actually give me some great 
results. I mean, all of these look amazing. We can see the moon, the tree, the bed, the moon, the tree, the bed. Here was another one where it kind of talks about a comic book page has three panels. Uh, so overall, things are a little bit better when you kind of de depict them as a comic instead. They do mention that you generally won't be able to say what isn't happening or isn't present. For example, you can't say a sandwich with no bread. You're going to end up getting a bread. Completely off note, I realized that a sandwich with no bread is pretty much a salad. So I ended up drawing a salad in the bread and I got my sandwich. Eh, a veggie sandwich, I guess. It actually looks pretty good. They do mention that sometimes you can use words like no, um, will not, has not, but it all depends. Here, for example, is a boy in a parking lot holding car keys, but there are no cars nearby. And we can see we tried it. Sometimes they're going to have cars nearby. So they do mention that while this is not always going to work, even if one image is correct, that's a big change compared to V5. They do mention that now you can talk to Midjourney a bit like it is ChatGPT. Obviously, you can't kind of say, hey, put more flowers in her hair or kind of direct an image but what you can do is examples like this where this would be your traditional version file style where uh you would draw a raven like this this could be your new chat gpt style which is more like writing a sentence and talking to a machine opposed to just creating some form of prompt Next, they talk about how to discuss multiple subjects in version six. And they say the best style is first to kind of break, create the simple scene, then kind of do callback details, then create setting details of the scene, and finally add the vibe or the aesthetics. So first, let's build the basic scene. So they say a uh, OK prompt is three friends sitting on a park bench. Here you're working, we're, we're going to be working with multiple subjects. And this is a good prompt and we can see we get the right results. They say a better result is by adding some form of descriptiveness to it. Uh, for example, here they say three different friends sitting on a park bench. By adding the word different, we're seeing different races, different colors. They tell us that even a better prompt is by saying three different best friends sitting close together on a park bench. Now, by adding the word best friends and sitting close together, you're going to get more of that friendly tone and true friendship emotion to some extent now that we built our original scene we're going to start calling back our subjects and the best way to call back our subjects is by always using the subject friend which we ended up using on our main prompt it's no point in calling someone jennifer in the middle and also make sure to always use simple sentences don't use breakout sentences like this so for example here we put our three different best friends sitting close together on a park bench i do put that the friend in the middle is a cheerful blonde caucasian woman wearing jeans and a green tank top so we now get that subject in the middle is going to be consistent to our details and we do see that the friends around are still different to some extent so now i want to update the friend on the left originally we updated the friend in the middle so the friend in the left again we're using that same subject is a hispanic male with black hair and a short beard wearing glasses a solid red shirt and black pants one thing that you are noticing though is now i'm asking mid journey to render a little bit more and more but we did get the results right now we have the caucasian female in the middle and the kind of hispanic male on the left and we're still getting different results for the one on the right now it's time to add details of the setting backdrop background and context they do mention a bad example of this is just adding there are live oaks and pigeons a better example is getting a little more clearer there are some pigeons on the sidewalk in the background are some live oaks the best is to get extremely specific. There are two pigeons on the sidewalk in front of the bench. In the background, the empty park contains some old life oak trees. They do mention to be prepared to roll specifics back or out of the prompt if you start seeing things become incoherent. And that's exactly what I saw, right? When I started to add that new prompt where we're adding the two pigeons in the sidewalk and the empty park contains some old life trees, we started to get, I, I didn't get exactly the prompt I got. I didn't see pigeons in all of them. And sometimes I didn't see pigeons at all. Uh, and that's the main reason where it doesn't 
And that's the perfect example where it doesn't matter how long the text is. What's more important is the amount of subjects and the amount of rendering you're asking Midjourney to do. I believe what is happening here is for my friend in the left, I'm adding too much description here where I'm taking too much memory just on that one character. I would guess if I was to remove a lot of this description here, I would be able to add even more subjects into this Canva. They do mention the fourth thing is to add your aesthetic or vibe. A not great way to do this is by say photo. Uh, a better is to add color photography. The best is to name a specific inspiration like a photographer's name or publication. If it's not a photographic, it's best to say things like digital art, but the best use is to say digital art by the style of so and so. So hopefully right now we are getting way better at this prompting style. I do believe it's a lot to take in. So make sure to kind of just try some of them out as we are watching this video. If you guys are enjoying the episode so far, make sure to hit the thumbs up and the subscribe button. I truly, truly appreciate it. I do believe my next video is going to be creating comics with version six, as I do believe there's a lot of potential there. So now if we continue here with the prompting guide, they do mention that you can place things where you want on the canvas using language to control composition. Uh, and they mention it's more reliable to describe a generic image in a short phrase than fill in the details starting with the focal point of the canva. And that's pretty much what we did in the last example where we started with a simple of three friends in a bench and we worked our way on to when we started to discuss each friend individually. Here is a prompt that they mentioned. There are three baskets full of fruit on the kitchen tables. The basket in the middle has one thing. The basket on the left has another and the basket on the right has another thing. And they also tell you in the background, there is a blank teal wall with circular windows. So you're telling exactly mid journey what you want. Like we saw earlier, you could add text to your image. And they do mention when you're adding text to the image, use phrases like says, printed on, entitled, inscribed with, labeled as, marked with, branded with. So make sure that it knows that it's trying to draw some form of text. Um, they also mentioned that you can also print text on things such as peach bubble, post-it notes, book covers, posters, like we saw here, a hello world written with a marker on a sticky note. Also to have text or letters appear alone, it sometimes helps to add the phrase typography design to the prompt. You can explore using phrases like isolated on the white background if you like the Canva to be otherwise blank. Another great information that they tell us is what you should do if your image looks blurry or janky. The first thing is like we saw earlier on when your prompt starts to get messed up, re most reliably remove details, right? That's going to be the most important. You're having too much details. So mid journey is is kind of losing its memory and it's not going to be working as intended. They do mention sometimes if you're having like a blurry face or blurry hands or blurry feet or blurry something, add key details to that. So if you have blurry hands, you're going to say, hands doing something. So hands on hip, hands holding a coffee mug, hands waving. So overall, this is going to help increase uh, the overall improvements of that jankiness and making it clear. They do mention if you have GPU minutes, chase coherency. So just keep upscaling and upscaling and that will give you the better results. Next is what should I do if stuff doesn't show up on the Canva and very similar, remove other details to make room. You're losing out memory if you are if you don't have everything in your Canva. So you have to remove details to save on the memory. Second thing, sometimes it works to move the missing bit closer to the front of the prompt. That's not necessarily always the case, um, but it does kind of have a little bit of weight on the front end. It does say sometimes it also makes uh, it's important to just try to phrase it uh, a different way. And by lowering your stylized, remember, if your stylized is over 100, you're going to start to see a loss in coherency of your prompt. The next thing we can look at is you can add a frame or border around an image by just describing it. Here, the image has a thin gold border or frame around it. Uh, and we can see all images actually came out pretty strong with that. Now, if you are a mid-journey user, obviously you are on Discord, definitely take um, advantage of the prompt chat and the prompt craft channels as there are a lot of tutorials there. One that really caught my attention here with version six is now you are able to kind of do this split face. I feel like back then it was pretty hard to do it, but here a face with two halves, the left half of the face is a girl. The right half of the face is a clown and it looks amazing. This is thanks to um, mid journey user clarinet. Uh, and we can see more examples like this. So version six is probably my favorite so far. And before I was, 
using Dolly 3 a lot. I think I'm going to move back to Mid Journey with this version 6 update. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. I know it was a little bit longer, but hopefully by this time, you are now uh, kind of a better prompting master here in, in Mid Journey with version 6. So make sure to hit the thumbs up, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Take care, have a good day, and see you next time.